Um, she came from my department, from my division, and when she first came, she said she was going to be the first power cable maintainer. My department was dominantly male, and she made it. She's a power cable maintainer. She's an officer of this union, and I'm very proud of her. And I'm going to bring her up to say a few words. My name is Celeste Kirkland, and I'm a power cable maintainer. There you go. It is my honor to have our governor, Kathy Hochul, in our union hall. Yeah. Not only is she the governor of our great state, but she is the first woman governor. Yeah. An inspiration to all working women and all the little girls growing up right here in New York. I'm the first female to be promoted to the power cable maintainer position, but I'm also the first female officer in the power division. I'm division vice chair for the power yeah. department. Yeah. And being the first, I know how hard it is to smash those glass ceilings. So thank you, Governor Hochul for smashing the glass ceiling over the Capitol in Albany. Yeah. Keep up the great work and keep leading the way. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the home of the Transport Workers Union Local 100. The 46,000 members of this union are the dedicated workers who move New York City on bus and subway systems. We are also the workers who safely transport thousands of school children in Westchester County, Connecticut, and parts of Brooklyn to their schools and back home each day safely. We operate and maintain the B-Line bus system for hundreds of thousands of communities in Westchester. Our members operate the buses of New York Waterway for commuters from New Jersey. We take thousands of tourists on sightseeing trips around the city and on red double-decker buses operated by Big Bus Tour. Hundreds of our members help operate the vital assessor ride service for MTA for thousands of disabled New Yorkers day in and day out. And TW members are the horse and carriage drivers in Central Park, what says New York better than the beautiful Central Park horse carriages? <laughs> we are here to give a special welcome to a person who has profound impact on TW Local 100, our members, and our families. She, of course, the governor of New York State, Kathy Hochul. This is the second time our governor has visited this union hall in the past month. Prior to that, a governor of our state had not visited our union hall in more than 30 years. This shows the respect she has for the men and women of TWU. I got to know Governor Hochul during the time she served as Lieutenant Governor. I spoke to her on the phone many times. I met her at a number of labor functions. But the place I got to know her the best was actually a very sad occasion. She attended the wake of one of our young brothers, St. Clair Richard Stevens, who had been killed in a terrible accident on the tracks. Her presence at the wake meant a lot to me and to the grieving family. And by the way, she was the only, only politician that came to that wake. It also showed me a sign of our governor that most New Yorkers don't get to see. Governor Hochul has been on a hot seat since day one as governor. She could not have taken over under more difficult circumstances. There was a crisis of leadership, a crisis of trust in government, a surge in crime, a split of enormous proportions between Albany and New York City Hall and an ongoing pandemic. Governor Hochul inherited a mess. 
and she has met every challenge and has done an incredible job. She has brought dignity back to the office of governor. She has brought respect back to New York from the rest of the country. Her actions are enormous steps in the right direction for transit workers and transit riders. She's accessible. She gets things done. She's exactly what our state needs today and for the next four years. So without further ado, I am thrilled to announce that TWU Local 100 wholeheartedly endorses Kathy Hochul for governor of New York State. Well, I accept, I accept uh, the honor of being able to head into the June primary and the November election with the support of this powerful union. And I am so proud not just to have the support, but for you to also know that I will fight like hell for you every single day. Because for far too long, and Tony and I talked about this, and I know from your members, there has not been the respect and the admiration that people gave to a lot of frontline workers. Well, how did the frontline workers get to their jobs as frontline workers? It wasn't for all of you showing up during the pandemic. You're the essential workers to the essential workers, which puts you in a very special place. Yeah. And you deserve our respect and our admiration, but also as we go forth, when there are attacks on labor unions and the labor movement in other parts of our country, I am so proud to be governor of the most unionized state in America, and we're gonna to continue to grow the ranks and create more opportunities because families like my own had their entire future changed because of the labor movement. And let me explain. My family, grandparents started impoverished in a little island called Ireland. And they left because they had no hope and no opportunities. They left as teenagers. And they went and became domestic workers in Chicago in an abusive situation. They finally left to a place called Buffalo, New York, where there were finally jobs to be had for people willing to work with their hands and work in tough conditions in a steel mill, making steel that graces our buildings even to this day. That was grandpa's job. And my dad had the same job. And because of those union labor wages, my family could count on an income that was steady and took care of a family and not everyone to be educated. And my parents were able to get out of a trailer park where they first lived because my dad, while working by day with his union card, could get an education at night. So you're looking at the granddaughter of these immigrants, the daughter of labor union workers from the beginning, who know the power of what unions and power can be done in terms of lifting up people and giving them a better outcome. But I also am aware of what a political force having unions behind me is heading into election time. Because you can't stop us. When you get the Democrats and the labor movement united together, people are gonna understand that working men and women belong in the Democratic Party. We're gonna remind them that we are the ones who fight for good wages and fight for health care and fight for education and fight for child care and fight yeah. for working conditions that every one of you deserve. We'll take that fight to the streets any day of the week. Because I'm Irish and I'm from Buffalo, I like a good fight. Yeah. Can't help it. I got steel in my veins, you know, I got, it's, how, it's how it goes. But to have this endorsement, I don't know if you appreciate what it means to me. It really does. Tony and I had a lot of conversations during the pandemic. And I'd call up and say, how are your members doing? And, it, and you were so resilient and so tough and said they're doing their jobs. But you don't know what that meant to everyone else. You did your jobs. You didn't complain. You put yourselves in harm's way so other people could get to their jobs. And I am so grateful and so honored to have this sport. So I've got one question for all of you. As I head into the very rough and tumble political season of New York politics, and you think about people like Celeste who's had to break some glass ceilings. I don't mind breaking anything that gets in my way. Yeah. Yeah. 
because <laughs> women are tough. Celeste, we have to be a little bit tougher in this business. We can do it, but they have the men with us as well. This is what you do, working together. I got one question. TW, Local 100, are you with me? Yeah.